Hi, I'm Stuart Bull and welcome to part two or lesson two of the Pentatonic series. If you would like to support these lessons, please check out these wonderful t-shirts uh, at guitarstarclothing.co.uk. If you want to hit me up for a Skype lesson, stuartball5150 at gmail.com. Okay, let's get right into it. So in lesson one, we were, you know, learning the pentatonic positions and uh, getting started with breaking out of the box. And we were working with the uh, high E string and the B string, the first and second strings. And if you remember, we were, you know, using the possibilities. <laughs> of those two strings by just playing those two notes and you know the pentatonic scale only has five notes so we're already a good way through it by just knowing those two notes so what we're going to do today is we're going to add a string so now we're going to add the g string into the mix and we're going to stick for now with the c resolving to the a and uh, one of the first things that we can look at is an octave down from the first thing that we learned in lesson one. So the first thing that we learned in lesson one was. Now, if we go down to the 5G, we can do that nice little kind of blues resolution to that A on the second G. We're just going to stick with these top three strings here, the E, the B, and the G, the first, second, and third. So what could be our next possibility there? Well, as we discussed in, discussed in the first lesson, we can resolve above. A lot of times you'll hear people with this lick, it's always... Well, there's nothing wrong with resolving above. Here's a perfect opportunity. Still sticking with that C to A. Okay, so where's another opportunity to do that? Okay, so now we can use this fifth fret G string and bend this uh, eighth fret B string up a whole step. Now we have this. And you can, you know, add, you know, whatever blues inflections you like to that bend or whichever bending devices you use. Or you could just slide straight up to it. Or as I did there, you can slide to it, slide back and then do the bend. Slide back down, there's a few things that you can do there. So, you know, we're already adding to our palette of ideas. Okay, so what would be the next opportunity? Well, if we remain with this C, we could maybe bend this uh, 12G up a whole step. And then if we, if we wanted to go back to a lick that we played yesterday, which was the 13B to 10B, and when I say yesterday, I mean lesson one, we have... And you can see we're running these ideas together. We're covering the whole neck and uh, you know it's starting to open things up for us and we're actually learning the pentatonic positions without even realizing so that was something else but anyway okay so that was another opportunity um, that we had there again we can start to get a little bit unconventional. Remember this lick from lesson one. Now this G string has an even more mellow sound, okay? Now I realize if you're playing on 11 and just looking at some girl in the audience, this is probably not gonna be your thing. But if you're trying to make some music, this can be really cool. Because it has a completely different tone to this. That's a bit sharper. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. That might have been a bit harsh, that girl thing. I do that. Uh, or at least I used to. Anyway, so that was uh, the next opportunity or another idea that we can have. And this so... This stuff just goes on and on and on. It really does. But there we have, I suppose, what you would call a, 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 a string skipping idea. Now, because we've involved this G string, if we go C... And we can bend this 12 up to 14, getting this idea. And if you get some uh, first finger bends under your fingers, you can now resolve above and below and slide down. Okay, I threw in a B there, but you get the idea. We're moving through these positions, we're learning these licks, and we're making some nice music with really just two notes. Okay, and probably the, you know, one of the final things I want to talk about, because you can go on about this for ages, is the octave of the first one that we did, which is here. Okay, so really explore all of those ideas. To cover the neck with just those two notes. Okay, so the next two notes that we're going to learn is going to be uh, a G and an E note. And we're going to start here on the third fret high E. We're going to add that blues bend again, almost as if we were in the key of E minor. Don't worry if you don't know what that means. But we're going to add that slight blues bend again. This will work perfectly well in A minor. And our first opportunity to go from G to E is going to be this third fret high E string to the open E string. So now we have C, A, G, E. C, G, excuse me. C, A, G, E. And because this is the A minor pentatonic scale, and it really doesn't matter to me getting the notes in the right order, as long as it sounds good, I don't really care. Uh, but basically, you have these four notes so far. A, C, E and G. Uh, and we'll get into the technicalities of it later, but we're just trying to make some music with this right now. So, okay, so we have that third high E to open E. Excuse me. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna leapfrog that E note and put it here on this fifth fret B string. Then we're gonna leapfrog this G over and the next available place is gonna be eight on the B. So we've got. Okay, now we're going to leapfrog this E note over this G, and this is going to appear uh, on the ninth fret G string. So we have. Now we're going to leapfrog that G note over to this twelfth on the G. Now, because we're not going to be moving past these three strings today, we're not going to go to the D yet, so our next resolution from G to E is going to be G 12th fret G string. And then we're going to bend this 15 uh, B up a whole step to the E, uh, which is at the 17th fret B. But again, you could just slide to it, or you could just play it. And now we're going to do the last one on this particular string, which is going to be uh, 20B to our 17B string, which is a G to an E. And just an octave of this one, or this one, or this one. Okay, so now we've really got a lot of the neck going on here.
So how can this help us to solo? And by the way, there's a lot of other opportunities here. You could have done this. Okay, you could have, uh, let's see, for example, you could do a nice uh, G note down here. And then bend from 10 up a whole step, high E. I'll leave you to explore those, but they're pretty, they're everywhere. Trust me, you'll be still be in two years from now, you'll still be discovering them. So how can this help us in our soloing? Well, I look at soloing pretty much the same way as I look at building a chord progression. And certain chords sound good together and certain notes sound good together. So let's take the first two notes that we learned in lesson one, which was C to A. Now, C to A are the minor third and the root of an A minor chord. That's a minor seven, but the tonality, you get the idea, okay? And the G and the B appear in an E minor chord. Uh, that's a straight one. I could play a minor seven. But anyway, my point is, if you've got this chord progression going on, Now those chords fit together pretty well. We're going from a one minor to a five minor, back to a one. So let's say for example, we were just playing over an A minor. How could we make that sound a little bit more interesting? Well, it can be done, and I do it, with a thing called making resolutions and hopefully making good resolutions. Because if I play this C to this A note, okay, I'm pretty, I'm outlining an A minor chord. That's what I'm doing. Now, if I play this G to E, E is the root of E minor and G is the minor third. I'm actually outlining the two most important notes of an E minor chord, which is the root E and the minor third G. So, if I were to play these chords, A minor, E minor, A minor. Now, maybe I'm in a lift in Romford in Debenhams. Maybe I'm in Costco. Maybe I'm in Target. Who knows? That music's maybe not the best thing ever written, but I think you'll agree those chords go together well. So, if I was to build my lines, my pentatonic lines, over those two chords, hopefully resolving nicely, I'm gonna get some really nice ideas. And so this is what I mean. We've got our A minor chord going, so I might play this line here. So what I did, A minor, E minor, A minor, A minor, so basically I'm going A minor, E minor, A minor. Okay, so, you know, went a bit wrong at the end there, but you get the point. I'm trying to make those good resolutions between C to A, which is my A minor, from my G to E, which is my E minor, back to my A minor. 
A minor, E minor, A minor, A minor, G, E minor, A minor. I'll try it one more time. A minor. A minor, E minor, A minor. You get my point, it's hard to explain it and play at the same time. But you get the idea. So now we've got two chords that we can work between. So it's not just, and the reason that I'm, sh I'm showing you this stuff is because when you learn the pentatonic positions in this kind of regular way, you'll get a chord progression or just one chord, and you'll start going. And a lot of times it's not even that good. So by realizing what chord, you know, arpeggios as they're known, exist within these notes, it's much easier to make music and uh, make nice statements and motifs and what have you. Okay, so that's it for lesson two. Just to recap real quick. Try and work with the first three strings, the high E, the B, and the G. Uh, try and learn all the combinations of C to A. Try and learn all the combinations of G to E. And then try and see the C to A as a small A minor arpeggio, the G to E as a small E minor arpeggio, and then try and play lines where you go A minor, E, mi e minor, A minor, A minor, E minor, A minor. And of course, you know, you don't have to stick to exactly what I say. You know, you can just put in bits of the notes. You, can, you know, it, it, at the end of the day, you just play, right? You know, and uh, but these are just ideas to sort of you know, push you in a direction that's hopefully going to make you sound melodic, harmonic, whatever it's called. Okay, I'm Stuart Ball. Thank you for joining me today. If you're still with me, don't forget guitarstartclothing.co.uk. Uh, if you want to hit me up for a Skype lesson, Stuart Ball 5150 at Gmail. Dot com and uh, I'll get in touch with you and we'll figure something out. Have fun, happy soloing, and I'll talk to you soon.